when I came in today and I was hearing the song, something about the name Jesus, something about the name Jesus, uh, thinking about, you know, just uh, the integrity of God and the integrity of his word and the integrity of, of, of Christ. Uh, I, I just must say this before I get into the word of today. And I believe this word is for somebody here. Uh, and I will just say it very simply. God can be trusted. Yeah. I don't know who you are and what you're going through right now. But I want, if you don't hear anything from the message of this morning, I've come with this one word for you. That God can be trusted. Numbers 13. <laughs> you know what the scripture says there in verse 9. That God is not a man. God is not a man. Numbers 23 and verse 19, it says, God is not a man. Can you hear me tell your neighbor, say, say God is not a man. <laughs> Look at somebody and say, God is not a man. I don't know who I'm speaking to this morning, but I just wanted to know that God is not a man. You know, when men make promises, they can repent. Man has uncanny capacity for lies. That's the difference between God and man. I know my name is God, man. But there's a difference between God and man. Man can lie, but God cannot lie. I say it again, God has integrity. God has integrity. God has integrity. Genesis 21, verse 1 and 2. The Bible says, And the Lord <laughs> appeared to Sarah, and he confirmed his word. He said, the Lord visited Sarah as he had said, and the Lord did unto Sarah as he had spoken. Somebody here listen to me today. God will visit you as he has said. I say it again, God will visit you as he has said. And God will confirm his word in your life. The same way God confirmed his word in Sarah's life, that Sarah conceived for Abraham in his old age. Tap your neighbor for me, say God can be trusted. Or say it again, say God can be trusted. You know why I'm emphasizing this? There's somebody going into this week and your mantra to be God as integrity. God can be trusted. Because as you say it and say it and say it, that deadline will turn to a lifeline. <laughs> Are you still with me today? Yeah, <laughs> say to somebody again, say God can be trusted. So I'm charging somebody. Maybe that's why you came for service today. That God wants to prove himself and prove his integrity in your life. So stay put. Put your whole attention on him. Glory be to Jesus. Lift your right hand with me, everyone. Our Father, we thank you for your presence in this place. Honor your word today in the life of everyone, everybody in this room, everyone online. As you preach and teach your word, charge it with power. Let it minister grace to every hearer. Let no one be the same again. Sweet Holy Spirit will give you permission to move over us in this house. Confirm every word with signs following. Prove the integrity of God's word to everyone under the influence of my voice. Help us to open our heart to receive. Thank you for transformation. Thank you for healing. Thank you for deliverances. Thank you for movement for somebody who has been stagnated. Thank you for open doors for somebody who has been experiencing closed doors. Thank you for open heavens for anyone who may be walking under a heaven of brass. We thank you, everlasting Father, in the precious name of Jesus. Somebody say, believe in amen. Again, it's a joy and a privilege to be here to share God's word with us. I bring you greetings from uh, my wife uh, and uh, our children and the entire Elevation Church, uh, I was sent with grace <laughs> to be a blessing this morning. And uh, that, that, that what we're looking at is dig ditches. So I've titled this, Dig Ditches, Borrow Vessels. Yeah. I just added small to it. Is that okay? Yeah. Dig ditches, borrow vessels. I'm going to be examining... Something that is very important, especially as, at this current time in our lives. Our capacity 
to fulfill our part in God's divine arrangement. You know, let me start out today by saying that in your journey of faith with God, there are two things that are very important. Please just follow me. I'm going to get into the word, uh, you know, and read scriptures very soon because some people love to read scriptures before we dig in. But let's just dig in anyhow. The Holy Spirit is here. <laughs> yeah. Two things, and that's not all, but two important things that are important in your faith work with God. One is a revelation of God's integrity and ability. That is what provokes the prophetic. When I gain a revelation of God's integrity and ability, and I started out today by mentioning to somebody here that God has integrity. God can be trusted. God can be trusted. The revelation of God's integrity and God's ability is very pivotal to our faith work. So you see all through the scriptures, God emphasizing and re-emphasizing that he can be trusted, that he has integrity. Not only that, that he has ability. Ability. That God has ability. <laughs> In Genesis 17, God showed up to Abraham and started to charge Abraham. The Bible said God appeared to Abraham at 99. And said, walk before me and be blameless. To be blameless does not mean to be perfect. It means not to lose focus. <laughs> yeah, not to lose focus. That's what it means. He said, walk before me and be blameless. And he said, I am almighty. The word almighty there is the one we call El Shaddai. The big-breasted, the multi-breasted one, the nourisher of the universe. God appeared to Abraham and gave him a revelation of El Shaddai. This season, may God reveal himself to you as El Shaddai. Amen. Well, I cannot hear your amen today. Amen. When you get the revelation of El Shaddai, in English, it's called omnipotent. The one who has all the potency in the universe. He revealed himself to Abraham. When God reveals himself to you as El Shaddai, even at 99, nothing in your body shall die. Yeah. <laughs> Everything continues to work because you've had an encounter with El Shaddai. Yeah. The omnipotent one. The one who nourishes the universe. So God has integrity and God has ability. On the premise of this, we can work with him. We can sing Christ as our firm foundation. The rock on which we stand. When everything around me is shaking. <laughs> i never be more glad. <laughs> I put my hope in Jesus. He's never let me down. <laughs> Glory be to Jesus. Because he has integrity. He can be trusted. And he has ability. But very quickly. I also wanted to understand something. To walk with God. The one who has integrity and ability, you must have an understanding of the demand or requirement that you must fulfill to commit him to perform. An understanding of the requirement, the expectation, the obligation that I must fulfill to commit him to perform. God is everywhere, but God is not active everywhere. When a people know how to commit God to perform, then they see his hand. Are you still with me today? And that's what we call mysteries. The mysteries of the kingdom. That's how we, that's the, how we commit him. I mean, for instance, we said the, the, one of the mysteries of divine prosperity in the kingdom is giving. You commit God. To perform based on his integrity and his ability. There are mysteries in the kingdom of God. But those mysteries are the obligation. They don't make sense a lot of the time. They don't make sense. But that's how we commit the God who has integrity and ability. Ephesians 3 and verse 20. Now unto him who is able to do exceeding abundantly far and above all that we can ask or think. 
But you know, I can, we can continue to say that according to his power that's at work within us. But I need you to understand, we need to commit him. Yeah. And we commit that God with integrity, with ability, by participating in certain mysteries. We're committing to perform. And then, so when you read 2 Kings chapter 3, where uh, the theme that I'm considering today is taken from, uh, from verse 16 of 2 Kings chapter 3, can you put it on the screen for me? You see a people, the king of Israel, spoke to the king of Judah and the king of Edom. So all the descendants of Abraham, they came together because Edom, that Esau's people. So Jacob and Esau, they came in one accord. They said the Moabites, the king of Moab, has refused to fulfill his obligation and is waging war against Israel. Come and help me. This is a typical case of maybe boardroom politics or political, uh, you know, maneuverings where you have to get, you know, allies here and there. I don't know if you're getting what I'm saying. Yeah, you get an ally here and there. And then they came into a situation where everything was dark and dingy and gloomy, no water, they were weary and tired. And all of a sudden, they had enough sense to say, look, how can we commit the God who is able, the God who has integrity? How can we commit him? They said, we need a prophet. Yeah, can we get a prophet? And then they said, oh, there's a prophet in this. They said, any prophet, there's a prophet in this land, Elisha. We're, we're, we're going to, if we can get to him, we will know the mystery. Somebody's following me. God has integrity. He can be trusted. He has ability. Is El Shaddai. But you need to know <laughs> how to commit him. How to commit him. That's the situation they found themselves. And they needed to know how to commit God. And that's what brought us to 2 Kings, you know, chapter 3, where you see in verse 16, when they met the prophet, he said, bring me the mystery. You know, like uh, one nation, right? Yeah. yeah, like they did today. Can you raise the volume of that keyboard a bit for me? Can you feel something in this house? <laughs> All of a sudden, the prophet started to give instruction. This is how you commit God in this situation. And he said, Thus says the Lord, make the valley full of ditches. How do we commit the God who has integrity, who does not lack ability to perform on our behalf? There's a mystery per time. There's a mystery per time. And I believe there's a mystery for this season. And part of the mystery for this season is what we're looking at. He said, Make the valley full of ditches. Everywhere was dry, no water, they were famished. And in verse 17, said, There shall be no wind, no rain. <laughs> said, Thus says the Lord, You shall see, you shall not see wind, neither shall you see rain. Yet the valley shall be filled with water that you may drink, both you and your cattle and your beast. Somebody, God will water your business this season. God will water your family this season. God will water your children this season. There shall be no dryness around your life. On the basis of that divine instruction, as they committed the God that has integrity and ability, overnight they saw the hand of God. Because indeed there was no rain, there was no wind. But the valleys were filled with water. The valleys were filled with water. The valleys were filled with water. I pray for somebody today, whatever uh, ditch you need to dig, my God will open your eyes this season. I said, my God will open your eyes this season. But follow me very carefully because I'm going somewhere and it's somewhere that is very interesting to me. In this service, I will, I will do a part and then continue in the next service. Yeah, somewhere, I, 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 I'm going somewhere that's very, very interesting. Something that practically changed my life. That's what God put in my heart, you know, to share this morning. The moment this happened, 
they saw the hand of God that they have committed based on the understanding of the demand or the requirement. Now, let's, let's, let's move fast. The same Second Kings, let's go to verse 4. I mean, chapter 4. Chapter 4 and verse 1 of Second Kings. Another encounter. Second Kings chapter 4. Where a certain woman, wife of the sons of the prophet, also got into trouble. The husband died, left nothing behind. And the creditors came to carry her, her, her two sons away. And then this woman said in her heart, how can I commit the God who is able and who has integrity? My husband served God faithfully. Yeah, this is a bad place to be. I'm speaking to somebody this morning who has sown seed in this house, who has served in this house. I need you to understand something. God has integrity and God has ability. And in this season, everything may be going down around the world, but the God who has integrity, he will prove himself in your life. Yeah? He will prove himself in your life. This woman stood to challenge the God who has integrity and the God who has ability to perform. So he, she, she, she approached the prophet. Said, your servant, my husband, is dead. And you know that your servant feared God. The creditors are here to take uh, my sons as born men. Look at the next verse, verse 2. Verse 2, quickly. Verse 2. Elisha said to her, what shall I do for you? <laughs> what shall I do for you? Time will not permit me today. But Elisha here was behaving like Jesus. Jesus that met uh, by, by, by Timaeus. He said, son of David, have mercy on me. He said, what can I do for you? <laughs> I said, Messiah, can't you see that? I can't see. <laughs> but I don't know. Maybe, 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 maybe that's not your problem. Maybe you need a wife. Yeah, be specific. Ladies and gentlemen, be specific. Yeah, <laughs> but that's not the subject of today. But Elijah was behaving like that as well. Because one of the mysteries of faith work is also specificity. Yeah, the capacity to capture exactly what you want God to do. But I'm not going there today. <laughs> Let's stay focused. Glory to Jesus. Elijah said, what can I do for you? Tell me. What do you have in your house? What do you have in your house? I'm going to dwell on this a bit for the rest of our time in this first service. Elisha brought a very, very practical side to this discourse around the mysteries that commit the God who has integrity and who has ability to perform. Elisha said, what do you have in your house? And she said, your handmaiden, the handmaiden had not anything in the house, save a pot of oil. Ah, there are many people in a time like this who have completely lost focus of what God wants to use around them to change their story. There are many people at this kind of time who have lost focus on the mystery that we <laughs> commit God to perform on their behalf. Tap your neighbor for me, say, dig ditches. Oh, you're not doing it very well. I said, I said tap your neighbor, say, dig ditches. <laughs> there are certain things we do to commit God, the God of integrity, the God of divine ability to perform on our behalf. Dig ditches. But you see, in this place, Elisha has a question. He asked a question that is very, very important. What do you have in your house? What do you have in your house? What do you have? And I'm asking somebody this question this season. God will not cause you to bend over backward 
to prove his integrity. No. All through the scriptures, we've seen the way God works. He opens your eyes to see something. And through that one thing, it can bring radical transformation even in a time of famine. We live in a time where discouragement is palpable, hopelessness is real. You can touch it, you can feel it. But God has integrity. <laughs> and God has ability. And he wants to open your eyes and my eyes to see something that he would use that will commit him to perform. I've chosen to call this seed. Seed. The mystery of the seed is that it is it can be overlooked. It's usually small. It's usually something that you don't reckon with. But from Genesis, we understand that everything that God does, it starts with a seed. 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 And from time to time, God will open my eyes and your eyes to see something. A seed type thing. You know, that God wants to use to change our story. In the creation of the earth, in Genesis 1 and verse 11, the Bible says, Then God said, Let the earth bring forth grass, the herb that yield seed. Genesis 1 verse 11, Let the earth bring forth grass, the earth that yield seed, and the fruit tree that yields fruit according to its kind. Whose seed is in itself on the earth. Everything that you see on the planet earth today, God created only once, especially uh, uh, plants and all that, only once. One apple seed <laughs> resulted into apple for generations to come. Even human beings. God only created one of each type. And that's it. We joined him as co-creators. That's why the Bible says he was, we were created in his image and likeness. Yeah. God created all of us. But he started by creating just one of each. That's the mystery of the seed. You know, and the devil is always very angry about seed. One of the reasons why the devil is is, is always against seed, angry with seed, is that he lacks capacity to create seed. He can only manipulate it. <laughs> Are you still with me today? Yeah. He can only manipulate it. He cannot create seed. So the devil is powerful, the devil is powerful, the devil is powerful. He's not that powerful. Yeah. He's here to create a human being. <laughs> Ordinary apple seed, the devil has not created. <laughs> as small as beans seed is the devil has not created glory be to Jesus but he can manipulate things he can manipulate our, our thoughts not to do the right things with our seed not to do the right things with ourselves all he does is to manipulate glory be to Jesus so it's important that you understand where I'm going today Elisha told the widow what do you have in your house? The woman said, nothing but a pot of oil. Nothing but a pot of oil. There's a seed around you for this season. There's something with which you can commit God to perform. Something with which you can commit God to perform. You know, the main problem that we have, especially in the time of crisis, is that we lack, very often, we lack the capacity to recognize our seed. Can you hear me tap your neighbor? Tell your neighbor, say, look around. Say, look within. Say, look up. Say, there's a seed around you. Yeah, there's a seed around you. 
there's a seed around you. There's, there's a seed around you. Everything God does, it starts with a seed. One of the greatest ways to commit God for performance, this God that has integrity for performance, is to locate the seed around you. And somebody, don't get afraid this morning, I'm not raising money. All right? This thing we're talking about is beyond money. Money is just a type. Just a type. It's just a type. It's beyond money. Elisha did not ask the woman for money. Only ask, what do you have in your house? What do you have in your house? That's all she asked. What do you have in your house? And the woman said, nothing, nothing, but, nothing, but. How many of us last week said nothing, but? You went to an office last week and you said, can this happen? And they said, no, it can't. Yeah, well, but, well, I'm not sure, you know. Yeah. In times of crisis, people start to second guess their, themselves. Second guess their seed. Second guess the things that God has placed around them. The things with which they can commit God. Uh, God who has integrity to perform on their behalf. You start to second guess it. It's human nature to second guess ourselves. God appeared to Moses. And said, what do you have in your hand? It's a rod. Moses has gotten used to this rod. So much. He didn't know it's this same rod that God will use to mesmerize Pharaoh and the kingdom of Egypt. <laughs> and all the astrologers in Egypt. What do you have in your hand? <laughs> Moses said, it's a rod. <laughs> said, drop it. Drop it. And he dropped it. And you know what happened? If you have been reading your Bible, you know what happened. Yeah. You know what happened? I'm, I'm here to challenge somebody this morning. There is something around you for this season. God will never leave anyone without a seed. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. He will never leave anyone without a seed. Even the widow woman. Everything looked like everything has turned around completely for her, negatively. Yet, there's still a pot of oil. A pot of oil. Ask your neighbor for me, say, what do you have in your house? Yeah. What do you have in your house? It's time to recognize your seed and walk with God with your seed. This season, we commit God, the God who can perform, the God who has integrity with something that he has already placed around us. The mistake that most people make is that, you know, they, they, they approach things from a different perspective. They feel, one is that people feel that there's nothing. Nothing useful. I mean, can you imagine in John chapter 6, Jesus wanted to feed 5,000. Listen to this. I was teaching them in our church this not too long ago. To say, see, as a pastor, for instance, one of the greatest sense that a pastor can have is that God is not expecting you to feed 5,000. Do you have five loaves and two fish? It's enough. If not, pressure will kill you. <laughs> As a man of God. I'm serious. Yeah. It's very simple. So, notwithstanding the demand, when I show up, all I'm asking is, how can I commit the God who called me on this assignment to confirm his word in this situation? There's a missing link. There's a mystery. And whatever he wants with which I should commit him, it's not what I don't have. It's what I already have. Are you still with me today? It's what I already have, not what I don't have. Yeah. God will not, the Bible says God is faithful. He will not allow you to be tempted more than that which you can bear. And in every temptation, He will make a way of escape that you may be able to bear it. That is the integrity of God. God is not the herbalist that will tell you to go and bring three uh, white lions. <laughs> yeah, you have never seen one before. God bless you. You see? And then you will now go back and say, where will somebody get a white lion like this? And they will tell you, if you can't get it, the problem cannot be solved. <laughs> Glory be to Jesus. Tell your neighbor, ask your neighbor for me again, what do you have in your house? The mystery of the seed. 
operates also in this wise. Most people focus on their need, not their seed. The only problem is that this earth, this earth, this earth has been programmed to only treat seed, not need. Are you still with me today? To only treat seed, not need. Isaiah 55 and verse number 10. When you read that, you realize that the earth only process seed, not need. Many people say, for as the rain cometh down and the snow from heaven and return not thither, but waters the earth and make it bring forth and board that it may give what? Seed to the sower and bread for the eater. What happens? Rain comes upon the earth to process seed. And then that seed brings forth two proportions, bread and seed. Are you still with me? This earth has been empowered by God to bring forth, to process seed. Yeah, to process seed. Genesis 8 and 22. If the earth remains, seed time and harvest shall not cease. The earth has been programmed to process seed. But people think the earth has been programmed to process need. When you show up, the earth is speaking to you. Don't bring me your need. Bring me your seed. <laughs> but some people, their need is written all over them, not just on their forehead. All of, the, the only thing they bring forth is their need, not their seed. Somebody is looking for a job, for instance, in this season, where unemployment rate is very high. And then all you have to show is your need. I need a job. Why I need a job? Why not I can arrange chairs? <laughs> That's my seed. Why I need a job? Why not I can code? I can code the dead and the red will, will, will wake up. Yeah. That's, <laughs> yes. Why, why, you know, why I've not eaten from yesterday? Who cares? People are hungry too. Yeah, but, but I, I, I know how to do procurement to save you money. That's your seed. I don't know if you're understanding what I'm saying. But for you to show up and say, ah, since, since COVID, they sacked me. I've not had a job. I've been this. I've been depressed. I've been... You're just front-loading your need. The earth does not process need. It processes seed. Only God can process need. And when you approach men, don't treat them like God. <laughs> you know what Hebrews 4 and verse 16 says? Let us now come boldly to the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in the time of need. When we come to the throne of grace, we can bring our need. But when you approach human beings, <laughs> bring your seed. Are you still with me today? Yeah. This hair has been programmed. In Genesis 8 and 22, the constitution of the universe was, was written. God said, after, uh, um, you know, the, the, the flood, I will no longer destroy the world again. Seeing that, you know, man is evil. I know that Genesis 8 and 21, but, but at, at, in verse 22, he said, if the earth remains, this earth remains, seed time and harvest, Cold and heat, summer and winter, day and night shall not cease. The earth processes seed, not need. When you leave church today, please let that resonate with you. Yeah. Bring me your seed. Don't bring me your need. The earth is speaking to you. When, El when that woman approached Elisha in 2 Kings chapter 4, verse number 2, Elisha told the woman, don't bring me your need. Bring me your seed. Yeah. Because the woman came from loading all the need. Elisha said, you commit God, the God who has integrity, the God who has ability, not with your need, but with your seed. Oh, how I wish many Christians today will understand 
that though God can be merciful, but sometimes your tears may not move him. <laughs> because your tears only communicate your need. And God is still saying, when you finish crying, front load your seed. When you finish crying, front load your seed. Then you will commit me to perform. The moment Elijah spoke to this woman, what do you have in your house? The woman said, nothing. Nothing. Nothing but a jar of oil. Nothing but a pot of oil. I want somebody to understand here today, there are no seedless human beings. God created everyone with a seed. We only struggle to locate our seed. In this season, you will locate your seed. Whatever is around you with which you will commit the God of integrity and ability, my God will show it to you. Oh, can I get a better amen? amen? The devil is always contending with our seed. Either blocking it, trying to close our eyes to it, or just manipulating it and making us see it as something that is useless, something that nobody will care about. The woman said, Nothing, 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 nothing but a jar of oil. Nothing, nothing. Because seed is always small. It doesn't look like it. Small does not mean useless. In God's economy, small does not mean useless. I say it again. In God's economy, small does not mean useless. In God's economy, God, small does not mean useless. Uh, when Jesus was about to feed the 5,000, he recognized that. That you just need to commit God with something. Uh, <laughs> you know, so when he said there's a lot here. That has something. He said, bring it. Small does not mean useless. I'm speaking prophetically to somebody here. Wake up and understand you are enough. What you have is enough. Just focus on it and allow God to use it. Allow God to use it. Allow God to use it. You know, you know the funny thing is this. When you hold a seed up, in your hand. It's always small like this. Look at me, everyone. It's always small like this, right? Small seed. Most seeds are small. Only God can decode the DNA of that seed. The devil doesn't have the ability. He can only suggest. But God knows exactly. But the devil, because he does not know the DNA of it, <laughs> is jittery when you hold a seed. So he will do everything to stop you from putting it in the right soil. Because if you put it in the right soil, the mercy of God, the favor of God is giving opportunity to manifest. If we can prevent you from committing God, then devil has won. Am I saying the truth? Glory be to Jesus. Somebody say after me, say, Lord, open my eyes to see my seed. <laughs> say it again, say, God, open my eyes to see my seed. Glory be to Jesus. And somebody also needs to pray, Lord, open my eyes to separate my seed from my bread. <laughs> because in times of famine, another thing that people do is that they eat their seed. Remember the famine when... Uh, uh, Samaria was besieged. Yeah. And uh, women were eating their children. Their children was their seed for the future. Yeah. They, they became so hopeless. Can I say something to somebody here today? Something that God has put in your hand. Maybe it's an idea. Maybe it's a company. The terrain is very harsh right now. Please don't eat it. Don't kill it. Yeah. Don't kill and eat. I don't know who you are, but I'm speaking to you prophetically right now. And God will be bearing witness in your heart as you listen to this. It may be somebody who, who is about to sell something very vital. And you are selling out of frustration, not out of re revelation. You know, there are two ways to live as a believer. You can live by reaction or by revelation. 
Many people today are living by reaction. That's why, you know, people just want to leave the country and just go. Just jack up by reaction. If you jack up by reaction, you will jack up Yeah. Jack that means you will come back. Yeah. <laughs> but if you go by revelation, the God of Abraham will go with you. The one who told Abraham, go to the place that I will show you, he will go with you. Glory be to Jesus. So it's very important that somebody recognizes that, that God is looking out to you. He wants to see the seed in your hand. Uh, he, wants, he wants to help you to recognize what he has placed around you. What he has placed around you. 2 Corinthians 9 and verse number 10. Uh, say, now may he who supply seed to the sower and bread for food. Supply and multiply your seed, the seed you have sown and increase your fruit of righteousness. God is the supplier of seed. He does not leave anyone without seed. There's something around you. Many years ago, says, well over 20 years ago, I was still serving with my pastor, Dr. Sam Adeyemi, and I was producer for Success Power, his radio broadcast. We got a letter. Uh, was it a letter? No, I think the woman walked down to our office to share a testimony. Yeah. There was a particular broadcast that I had the privilege of producing for him, titled, Start With What You Have. He wrote a small book out of that broadcast. <laughs> a woman was listening those days on Ray Power FM. Her story was almost exactly like that of the woman in 2 Kings chapter 4. Her husband died. She was a widow. She had like three or four children at home. As at the time she was listening to that broadcast, her children, she couldn't pay her children's school fees. They were at home. I'm telling you a real life story. Not Elisha and the widow. This one happened in this Lagos. This woman said she listened to the broadcast and she heard this short 15 minutes broadcast start with what you have. And she heard someone in the, on the radio saying, Look around you. There's a jar of oil in your house. Look around you. There's something around you said she finished listening to the broadcast and truly she was walking around her house and she said all of a sudden her eyes went to the crate of empty bottles when her husband was alive you know the people you call in Yoruba Jai Jai so a Lagos Jai Jai boy yeah they threw parties consistently so the man actually squandered money but the thing was that they had crates of Drinks, alcoholic, non-alcoholic, all sorts, all stacked up. She said, all of a sudden, her eyes went on them. And you know, as God walks, as she was looking at it, she heard somebody outside. These people that move around with bottles, you know, clinging on bottles and say, bottles. <laughs> and all of a sudden, you don't do her. Uh -uh. <laughs> somebody is outside. So something is here. So. She, she ran and called the man. And the man valued all the bottles that he had in the house and paid her. She said, as at the time she came to give her testimony, she said from what she got from that man, she actually started a business. Yeah. She started a business. And she said, maybe this was like six months or nine months later, she said, now I can comfortably pay my children's school fees from that business. And life has changed for us. <laughs> Tap your neighbor for me again. Say, God can be trusted. <laughs> say it again. Say, God can be trusted. Glory be to Jesus. God can be trusted. God can be trusted. God can be trusted. The mystery of increase works with seed and space. Seed and space. Elisha asked the woman, what do you have in your house? And the woman, the woman answered and said, nothing but a jar of oil. Nothing but a pot of oil. Look at verse 3 of 2 Kings chapter 4. Verse 3, quickly. Can you put verse 3 for me? Then he said, go 
borrow vessels abroad. All your neighbors, even empty vessels, borrow not a few. There are vessels available globally. In the second service, I will dwell on space. Yeah. The mystery of divine commitment rests on the principle of seed and space. Yeah. You locate your seed and then you make room. You make room for your seed. For this service, I need somebody to understand. Don't lose me. Let's, 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 focus. let's start, you know, <laughs> from what we have. Somebody, you have something. Don't undermine what you have. Don't overlook what you have. There's something for this season. Can I tell you the truth? This, is, this season is so, so ripe for breakthrough than ever before. Everyone that broke through supernaturally in the scriptures, it was not at convenient time. It was a dangerous time. Like this woman. Dangerous time. Dangerous time. Between COVID and now, we have seen people that God has blessed tremendously. Where some people are still sitting and wondering what is going on, complaining some people are committing God to perform can I pray for somebody here this morning who has lost inspiration who has lost the power of revelation who can no longer see and look around you know if that woman just imagine that woman saying nothing at all ah the prophet will have said this is very ungodly this is unlike God something is wrong in fact, the prophet may have committed to go to her house and search to prove to her that God has integrity. There's a seed around you. I don't know if you're getting what I'm saying today. Because at that material point in time, if there was nothing at all that God can use, that woman is finished. And fatalistic thinking makes you feel like you are stranded and there's nothing around you at all that God can use. Can I beg somebody here today <clears throat> as you go into this week please walk away from fatalistic people. Yeah. Avoid them. Cut them. Scroll past them. If you are on online, just scroll past. Don't stay around fatalist, fatalistic thinking. It is not kingdom. It is not kingdom. It is not kingdom. It is not kingdom. Because God cannot be stranded. He has never been stranded once. If it's in your life, your situation is not fatal. It's not fatal. It's not fatal. There's something around you. There's something in your house. Stop carrying your need on your head. Carry your seed. That's the word for somebody this morning. And I believe that God is turning something around. My time is almost gone, but I need you to understand something. Like I said, seed can be money, but money is not all the seed available. Remember, service, kindness can be, you know, can be seen in the story of Rebecca. In Genesis 24. Isaac needed a wife. Abraham was about to die and called the oldest servant in his house. Go to the place of my people and get me a wife for this man. The servant asked Abraham, what about if the woman will not follow me? Should I take your son down there? He said, no. God promised me. Yeah. <laughs> he said, God promised me that my children will take over this place. He says, so that God will send his angels ahead of you. When you go, 
But you see how the servant went? He went with seeds. The Bible says he packed 10 camels loaded with all sorts. And then went. And then he got to where the daughters of the city were fetching water. And he prayed a simple prayer. Yeah. He said, oh God of my, my master Abraham, grant me success today. Give me good speed this day. <laughs> and show kindness unto Abraham. Yeah. Good speed. But you see, when God will answer his prayer, he said, any lady that comes here, who offers me water, and also said, I will also water your camels also. Let that be. When this man wants to identify, he, he, he identified based on the mystery of siege. Anyone that will come, you know somebody could have come. This man had 10 camels, packed with all kinds of things. A lady could have come and said, ah, what do you have in that bag behind that camel? Can I have one of that? You know? But how will I recognize a covenant wife? He said his service. This man, the Bible says, as he finished speaking, <laughs> he had not even finished praying. Rebecca showed up. And as Rebecca showed up, you know what the man did? Went to meet Rebecca. And the Bible described Rebecca. Beautiful. <laughs> Lovely lady. You understand? She just showed up. A damsel. If you read more recent translation said she was beautiful to behold. New Living Translation. When she showed up, the man just went and said, Excuse me, can I have some water, please? She said, Water? That's not a problem. Yeah, I'll give you some water. Oh, your camels too. I'll water them. <laughs> now, listen to this. Listen to this. Let me hand on this. Listen to this. <laughs> That's 10 yard. Yeah, wife material, 100 yard. <laughs> Do you understand what I'm saying? <laughs> When she, she showed up with a seed, she, she told the man, I'm going to water your camels also. Now, you can Google what I'm going to say now. A camel, after a long journey, needs about 50 liters of water to be well watered. Yeah, that's 500 liters, like the GP tank behind your house. This woman filled it. Yeah. As in what I'm saying now, go and check it out. Camels can drink water. Yeah. And after a long journey, they really need water. This woman did not complain. Just watering them, watering them. When she was done, the man went to do Thanksgiving. Say, God, you have integrity. God, you have ability. You are faithful to your servant Abraham. You brought this woman. The Bible says she brought nose ring, all kinds of jewelry, and then she was putting it on her. She could have come to ask for gold because servant of Abraham had gold, had all kinds of things. But the heart is always saying, don't bring me your need, bring me your seed. Rise on your feet, everybody. Hallelujah. Lift your two hands to Jesus. Say, Father, open my eyes. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Help me to see the seed that you have placed around me. Whatever kind of seed this season. Anything you have placed around me with which I can commit you to perform. With which I can commit your integrity. Open my eyes to see my five loaves and two fish. Open my eyes to see that thing, that ability, uh -huh, that skill, that, that act of service. That, that thing that I can do this season that will turn things around, that will commit heaven uh, to transform everything around my life. Pray in the Holy Ghost, somebody. Don't look around. This is an auspicious moment. God is opening eyes here. Press in, press in this morning. Praketa kala bro de bo shata yagada. Ekorodo bo sete kalangre de kete yada. Turn that song to your prayer. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. 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 Every action.
decision that I need to take everywhere where I need to dig ditches this season everywhere where I need to borrow vessels this season Lord open my eyes Thank you, Jesus. Before I take my seat, I need to say this prayer and speak a blessing. You, you need to pray one prayer and then I'll speak a blessing. In Genesis 26, Isaac had wells that he inherited from Abraham. That was a seed for a new beginning. <laughs> but there was contention for the well. The Bible says the Philistines envied him. Verse 12 of Genesis 26. In the same year he sowed, he had seed to sow, he ripped a hundredfold. <laughs> Look at that. Then Isaac sowed in the land and received the same year a hundredfold. And the Lord blessed him. Look, verse, verse 13, quickly. And the man waxed great and went forward and grew until he became very great. What? Look at verse 14. For he had possession in flocks, possession in herds, great store of servants. And the Philistines did what? That's number one. Envy. And then, everywhere he went, I was on this a bit more in the next service. Every space is created. They blocked it. They blocked it. They blocked it. They blocked it. The Bible says he went to a place called Sitna, which is a place of enmity. He went to Isaac, the place of quarrel. They quarreled with him. <laughs> Until he left that place and then went to a place of room. The Bible calls the place Rehoboth. Yeah. Rehoboth. Somebody, <laughs> maybe it's because of you I'm praying this prayer because you may not be in the second service. Because you need to press into your Rehoboth. The place of space. The place of many rooms. So you're going to lift your hand to Jesus right now. You're going to speak against envy. Speak against enmity. Speak against contention declare contention has come to an end over your seed over your ability over your skill whatever value proposition that you have for this season that is under contention break the hold of contention this morning speak against your pressures of envy and animosity gang ups in the name of the lord jesus declare as i dig ditches this season i stand against envy I stand against contention. I declare that I'm shifting into Rehoboth in the name of the Lord Jesus. Everywhere where my effort has been undermined, where my effort has been overlooked, in the name of Jesus, we break the hold of contention. We break the hold of enmity. We break the hold of the oppression of envy. At work, in the boardroom, at home, within family, we stand against contention in the name of Jesus. We stand against the hold of contention, whatever is contending for your seed. In the name of the Lord Jesus, we stand against it. We stand against it. We stand against it. We declare somebody receive a clearance to your Rehoboth. Receive a clearance to your Rehoboth. Receive a clearance to your Rehoboth. By the anointing upon this service this morning, we decree a divine entrance into your place of room. Thank you, Jesus. Lift your two hands with me. Father, in the name of Jesus, I speak grace over your sons and daughters. Everyone in this room and everyone online. You who has integrity, you who have 
ability. I pray in the name of Jesus. Manifest yourself in everyone's life. As hell shall die. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Let your hand rest upon somebody. Open our eyes to see our seed. I decree that your season of stagnation comes to an end today. In the name of Jesus. Somebody receive sight. Receive vision. Grace to recognize your seed. You will no longer be stranded. In the name of Jesus. Let the testimony of the widow be reproduced here right now. In the name of the Lord Jesus. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Somebody under the influence of my voice right now. God said to tell you. I will be faithful unto you. Say so let not fear hold you back. You are enough. What you have is enough. He said, I'm making a space for you where your seed will flourish. He said, step out in faith. Step out in faith. Step out in faith. Whatever the soul of your fish I tread upon, I'll give you as your inheritance. Your seed will no longer die in the ground. Your effort will be celebrated. Somebody here, grace is coming upon you. It will come in terms of help for men men will start to announce your seed to your world in the name of jesus somebody is receiving favor on social media people would put it you know your matter on their head to promote your seed until it starts to bring forth to full capacity thank you jesus thank you jesus put your hands together celebrate jesus today